Hi everyone, I'm Amanda and I run the blog Major and Fangirl. On this blog I review different television shows once a week, such as Once Upon a Time, Criminal Minds, and Sleepy Hollow. This week I'm reviewing Criminal Minds. Now in past, um, the last time I reviewed a Criminal Minds episode, I reviewed what I call a back episode. And that's because when I'm watching it chronologically, I am currently in season 8, however the show is on its 11th season. I decided that this week I wanted to review an episode that I thought looked interesting and I didn't want to just wait until I got to that episode so I decided that you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and skip all the way to the most recent episode so that's one of the most beautiful things that I love about this show is the fact that Criminal Minds is geared um, so that no matter what season you're in if you, you just sit down and Criminal Minds is on you can just be like psh, turn it on and then boom you can follow the episode like for me I'm in season 8 I have no idea what's going on in um, season 11 and yet I was able to completely follow the episode and that's an amazing thing about the show. Season 8 is the one of, I think, again I haven't seen season 9 or 10, um, but season 8 is the first one out of the first 8 seasons that has a, se a story arc for the entire like, 24 episodes, which is obviously unheard of. I don't believe that happened in the previous 7 seasons, but it's happening in the 8th season. So. I reviewed the episode Pariahville, which is the most recent episode, and the general premise of this is the fact that this um, woman, um, her name is Paige, she is murdered, and usually when the BAU is called into a case, there's usually three victims, and three is the number for some reason, I don't really understand why, but three is the magic number to call in the FBI. but. The only reason why you would call someone in for less than three is if there were extenuating circumstances or there was something unusual about the case. Now, what was unusual about this case was the fact that this um, woman was murdered in a town called Glenport Village. And Glenport Village is a town, um, it's a planned town full of um, sex offenders that are not in prison anymore. They, they're they trying to uh, rehabilitate into society and they are not violent ones like there are no rapists and no pedophiles these are just like um the the sex offenders that are in this town are those that commit statutory rape not rape rape but like i, I can't explain the difference but statutory rape and then um uh, pedophilia and those are those types of sex offenders are definitely not allowed in this town so there are so many um, potential suspects for the BAU to choose from so that's why they that's why the local sheriff department called them in I thought this was an interesting episode I had to go into it carefully because this episode is very triggery for us for a lot of people it definitely touches on I mentioned so many different things because again this town is full of sex offenders even the reverend who runs the whole place admits to having an incident so it is full to the rim of sex offenders and it's very difficult to watch um so I, if you're gonna watch this episode I would definitely be careful if you will, if you are ever, if you ever have been, or you, if this sort of thing triggers you, don't watch this episode. It just, just don't wait till next week to watch the previous episode, or go back and watch season eight to see Mark Hamill as the replicator. Okay. Despite the triggeriness, it wasn't all right. Episode. It wasn't necessarily the best. I but. Then again, I'm like gripping at the edge of my seat because I'm in season eight, so I'm at, my expectations are pretty high. Excuse me. One of the things I did not like about this episode was just this might just be because I'm very biased. I have an opinion. I, if anyone's like on the sex offender list, I just I I, I don't just. That's my personal opinion, basically, so that kind of biases when I view any episode like this. 
but I didn't it, I didn't like how one of the characters, Dr. Tara Lewis, who's played by Aisha Tyler, who is the current host of Whose Line Is It Anyway, she was very supportive of the residents of Glenport Village. She was very I'm not she was very how do I explain this? She spoke to them as if they hadn't done anything, as if they were just ordinary people and that everything they were doing was okay. And maybe she was just doing that because she wanted to get on their good side in order to um, have them reveal information, but she was like, that's how she was talking about them at most of the times. And it just really bugged me because even though, even though like there's no like um, pedophiles here, well, they find one that's been keeping his pedophilia tendencies secret. There's no one like that, so, but still, I just, I, it, it didn't sit right with me, so that bugged me pretty much the whole episode, was how um, Dr. Lewis could, um, handled the whole situation of where they were at and just people there she was very I, I felt she was too friendly with them because even though like they're not the um, types of sex offenders that people usually go oh not uh, there's they still are sex offenders they still did things that were not okay and things that children shouldn't have seen things that other people it's not okay, and so I think that needed to be in there, in how uh, Dr. Lewis spoke with them, and it wasn't. So that really bugged me. On a positive note, though, there, the plot twist, when you actually find out who the unsub is, everyone was expecting, even the profilers were expecting a man between the ages of 35 and 40, which makes sense because they figured that the unsub was someone who did not have a tracking device that the Reverend has every single um, new resident undergo. Well, they have to have a, a, a tracking chip inside, and they have signed a, con they signed a contract agreeing to this, so it's, it's okay. I don't know about it in an ethical sense, but legally they signed the contracts. So I'm assuming it's all right. And certain ones where they've been inside um, Glenport Village for about five years with no incidents, they get it removed. So that's so that's how they were able to identify the, um, that the person was over the age of 35 because that's the average starting age of when people can start getting their chips removed. And so everyone was focusing on men ages 35 to 40. However, I. The director, I can't remember who the director was, but they were really, really smart because they showed hints that something was going to happen to the sheriff's daughter because they kept showing scenes of the sheriff and his two kids, and they don't really get into the lives of the, the local police or the local characters. They usually get into the lives of the main characters, not so much the local characters, so I knew something was going to happen to um, one of his kids, most likely his daughter, because his daughter was being very rebellious and very, oh, why do I have to do all this? I don't want to listen to you. Just go ahead and do whatever you want. I don't care if you tell me I'm not going to go to this party because you're afraid of the serial killer that's going around. I'm going to go to this party anyway. And, yeah. But, so I could kind of tell that something was going to happen to her, and it did. Um, she ended up being picked up by the serial killer, who happened to be someone who was younger in the, in, I believe... This person was, they didn't give his exact, if they gave his exact age, it was very, very quickly, but he was between the ages of 18 and 25, so he was a young kid, and that actually fits because in the very, very beginning, they mentioned that Paige, the original murder victim, was uh, arrested for making out with a high school student because she was a teacher there, so it makes sense that this, that this guy would be in her house because it fits type her victimology so very I think that was very well played by the writers and the director how they worked that in so that was very good that was I didn't expect that up until I saw um, the, the sheriff's daughter get into the car with that with that boy 
So once she got into the car and he started talking and he's like, oh yeah, no, no, there's an after party that we're going to go to. Yeah, come on, let me take you for, let me take you there. Would you like a ride? And she's like, oh yeah, I'm going to take a ride with you. Da, da, da. Yeah, no, the second she got in the car and the, the seat buckle didn't work and he said it was broken, right there I knew, no, 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 that guy is the unsub. So it was very well played. I didn't expect it until right when, like, right before you found out he was the unsub. So, very well played by the writers and the director. That it was, it was not. That was a cool twist. Um, but yeah, like I said, I didn't like how Dr. Lewis was um, interacting with the residents of Glenport Village. I also don't like the fact that they didn't really resolve the storyline of the one character who was revealed to actually be a pedophile. They didn't really explain what was going to happen to him. They didn't show um, Dr. Lewis and Morgan telling this to the Reverend, which is something they said they were going to do, so they never resolved his storyline. So I didn't really like that. I didn't like how there's not as much read, but Reed's my favorite character. So again, I'm biased. I won't read in every single scene, but that can't happen. Still, it was. All right, and then I didn't like... How, again, spoiler, how Dr. Lewis immediately shot the, vi the um, victim, excuse me, didn't um, just immediately shot the unsub, didn't really give him a chance, give a chance to talk him down. She just said, here, let's talk about something. And he's like, talk, talk about what? And then she was like, yeah, let's talk about your parents. And so he's like, my parents? Let's the girl down for a second. My parents? Shoots him and he dies. And I think that... Uh, Dr. Lewis should have given the unsub a chance. Like, they should have talk tried to talk him down some more. Morgan could have said something. I, I don't know, but just more of a talk. I think they rushed it because they were short on time and they have this really long quote at the end that they say. Because they, they have quotes at the beginning and the end of every episode. But overall, this was a decent episode. Not one of their best. It's not one of those edge of your seats episodes. It's Alright, it's a nice episode to watch for lack of a better term. And again, if you are someone who's easily triggered by this sort of thing, and it get, um, by this sort of thing meaning anything to do with um, any sort of sexual abuse or sexual offense, I highly discourage you from watching this episode. Strongly discourage you from watching this. But if that doesn't trigger you, Watch, watch this episode. This is a good story. Not their best, not their worst. So, until next week, have a good day.